Namaho hum 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 Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutam Sri Vakti Vakti Vita Swami Nitya Nam Nime Namaste, hey, hey, Saraswati, hey, hey, Guravani, Pachahani, here is a Sasana. Pasya dhyare sa thani vena Pau Jaya Sri Krishna Jai Tanya Prabhu Nityan Nahamda Sri Adveda Gadadad Darsi Vasan Ghor Bhakti Vrindhadhan Eight one Ram, Ram, 
हे हा हे हरे कृष्ण हे कृष्ण कृष्ण हा हरे हा हे हा हरे हम हम हरे हम 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 हा हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे हा हरे हरे हम हरे हम 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 हरे हा हरे हरे मिठाई गौर थाय घोर हरि भौ हरि भा हरि भा हरि भा हरि भाय भंश ध्याय प्रभु फरा प्रभु फरा प्रभु फरा ध्याय प्रभु फरा प्रभु 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 जय जय की जाए हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाए ओ प्रेम आनंदे हरि हरि ओ नो वर्स वी आर नॉट वेरी वर्स्ड टुडे so in our series of lectures we will continue speaking on lord chaitanya <laughs> preparing our consciousness our minds our hearts our life for the appearance of lord chaitanya in two days coming up on sunday so um as much as we can we try to fill these days preceding his appearance with gorkita we spoke a lot about tatva tonight we'll spoke speak some leela <laughs> um and a particular mood of leela that i would like to emphasize it's um maybe for some of you it's a little hard to understand but because you're all nice people here <laughs> and these this leela is not about being nice <laughs> is there anybody here that's not nice uh, could just raise your hand <laughs> okay we got people who are truthful that's that's a brahminical quality anyway <laughs> so um shri krishna j shri krishna when he was in his pastimes in vrindavan he performed pastimes in his three ages omagyan timaranda syagina jana salaka ya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha namam vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shri makti bhakti vedanta swami ti namine namaste saraswati deve gauravani pacharine nirvishesa sunyavadi pasyatya desa tarin shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadhar sivasari gaur bhakta vinda hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 rama hari rama 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 hari hari So there was the Bal Lila, Baganda Lila, and Kishor Lila. So that was the three different categories of ages from Krishna. 
And uh, from zero to five is Baal. From six to ten is Paganda. When Krishna reached eleven, he was in his Kaishur Leela. And that's where he performed Rasa dance in that age. And that's, we worship actually as, as a society, we worship Krishna as Kishore Krishna. We honor and respect all of the manifestations of Krishna's pastimes, but we're not uh, just like the Balabha Champar Sampradaya, they worship Krishna in Balila. His baby pastimes are their focus, but we are in his Kishore, Krishna, Radha, and Krishna in. Vrindavan, that's our direct focus on Krishna Lila. So uh, in his Baal Lila, he performed a lot of mischievous pastimes, stealing butter, you know, feeding it to the monkeys, passing urine on the floor, uh, and just doing all kinds of things that were mischievous. And... Uh, speaking, and then when he would get caught, he would say, it's not me. <laughs> so he would lie. <laughs> well, that's Krishna. He would do all kinds of little childish pranks and various types of pastimes just to charm the hearts. He would go out to play with his friends, and his mother would call him for lunch. She would send Rohini to get him, but he wouldn't come, Then she would go personally. And he still wouldn't come. And so he was always a naughty child, a mischievous child, stealing butter, breaking butter pots, and uh, doing all kinds of things just to cause mischief. But that was his nature, and that was his uh, way to attract people to, his, to him. He was very attractive in his mischievous mood. When you do something mischievous, you get punished. <laughs> so, but when Krishna does, everybody enjoys. <laughs> so Krishna is like that. So, uh, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, there's no difference, also was quite naughty and mischievous. Um, his brother, Vishwarup, his older brother, which was, he was an expansion of Sankarshan, and uh, he was very studious in school. He liked school very much and he liked to learn. And then as he grew older, he took an interest in spiritual life and then he started to associate with Advaita Acharya and uh, regularly attend Advaita Acharya's lectures and even have private conversations with Advaita Acharya on spiritual life. So, uh, and after some time, he became so absorbed in the idea of spiritual life that he didn't want to, you know, stay home, get married, or do any of the things normal people do. He wanted to take sannyas, so he did. He just took sannyas, and one day he left, and never came back. Nobody ever heard of him again. He just left everything. Are you going to do that? No, you're going to have how many wives? Three or four? And then how many children? Twenty? No. Okay. Eighteen. All right. No. <laughs> so his mother was a little bit unhappy to see her son, you know, getting getting so attached to spiritual life. And she connected it with the fact that he liked to study. So her son, Nimai, Lord Chaitanya, he also liked school. He liked to go to school. He liked to study, he liked to learn, and he was showing the same symptoms as his brother. So his mother was thinking, Boy, if he becomes, you know, like his brother and becomes too intelligent, and then he'll also, you know, leave and take sannyas, and then what will happen to us? <laughs> so uh, she talked to her husband, Jagannath Mishra, and they decided, yeah, you're right, let's take him out of school. <laughs> so 
So they decided that not to send him to school. <laughs> so little Nimai, Lord Chaitanya, you know, he liked to go to school. Now he was not, he was told, you don't go to school. Now some of the neighboring ladies, when they learned that, you know, Sachi Mata was taking Nimai out of the school, they would say, boy, our kids, they don't like to go to school. We have to force them. And your son, he likes to go to school, and you're taking him out. <laughs> And she wouldn't really be reveal the reason. So he was. So he now he was not going to school. So he decided to do his program of mischief. So he would go to people's gardens with some of his friends, and they would put a blanket over him, and they would act like a bull, and they would knock down people's trees <laughs> in their gardens, and sometimes destroy the garden. And they would, you know, sometimes in the gardens, in the fields, they put the scarecrow up, you know, the, kind of like a dummy guy to scare the crows away. So he would knock that down. <laughs> and then people would come out and they would see him and then they would yell and he would run and laugh. So he, was, he would play with his friends like that. And of course, he would do other mischief. Yeah, we know in India, as opposed to in Western countries, uh, the outhouse, where the bathroom, we call it a bathroom, toilet room, WC, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, <laughs> uh, is always outside of the house. It's never in the house because it's considered to be unclean, and therefore the house should not, the, the bathroom or the area, it should be outside. So that was that's was that's India. And of course, now modern India is changing, but mostly it's still in India like that. In most of the villages, you know, they don't have. There's no bathroom in the houses. So people would go into this little shack they would have. It was like the outhouse. And you know, there's in India, there's locks on the inside of the door and there's locks on the outside of the door. <laughs> so people would go in to do their duty and he would lock the door from the outside. <laughs> and then he would run away so they couldn't get out. <laughs> and then they would be banging on the door and calling, get me out of here. <laughs> the door was locked. So, yeah, so he would do all this kind of mischief. And then, uh, even before, when he was going to school, he would also do mischief. You know, in India, they have the bathing places. They're called ghats. And the ghats have two sides. There's one side for the ladies to bathe, and the other side is for the men, so they don't mix. So the ladies and the men, they go on each different sides. And when they, before they go in, they leave their clothes on the banks of the gut. So he would come and he would take the men's clothes and put it on the women's side and take the women's clothes and put it on the men's side. <laughs> so when the men, men come out, they would see all kinds of saris and cholis and other kinds of things <laughs> and think, what is this? <laughs> Where's our clothes? The ladies would see dhotis and kurtas. <laughs> so sometimes the Brahmins, you know, many of them were smart to Brahmins, so Lord Chaitanya would tease them. So they would go into water sometimes to do their Gayatri. So they would stand waist deep in water and chant Gayatri, and he would come and he would pull their feet out from underneath and they would fall in the water. <laughs> He would swim underneath and pull their feet out. And then sometimes they would be chanting Gayatri and he would come and swim underneath and he'd come up and with a mouth full of water he'd spit it in their face. <laughs> and then he'd laugh and then he, would, then he would swim away and they would start yelling at him. <laughs> So the, the Brahmins got together after this was happening regularly. He would do all kinds of nonsense. So they decided, let's go tell his father, Jagannath Mishra. So they came as a small group to come and complain. 
So when Jagannath Mishra was hearing all their complaints, he was becoming very concerned that his son was causing so much mischief. So he, he, he promised, when he comes home, I will, I will punish him. So he was going into school at that time. So he was on his way home. And uh, his friend said, you know, the Brahmins came and are complaining to your father, and your father's going to punish you when you get home. So he thought, oh, okay. So what he did was he, he took his clothes and put some dust over them, you know, dirt, and then he put ink on his hands, and then he came home. And his father was ready to chastise him, and he said, oh, father, I didn't go to the Gat today. You can see my clothes are dusty, and I still have ink from school on my hands. And then his father would get confused <laughs> and didn't know what to do. So <laughs> he would always try to, different ways he would get out of it. Prabhupada used to say, you know, the, we have that tendency to be mischievous too. <laughs> but where does it come from? It comes from Krishna. <laughs> Krishna has this mischievous nature and um, and people are mischievous. Of course, in some places in the world, people are more mischievous than others. <laughs> Depends on the culture. <laughs> Here, everybody's so nice. I don't. I didn't meet any mischievous people yet, and I'm feeling alone because <laughs> I'm mischievous <laughs> by nature. <laughs> I found one. His name is Ananta, but that's the only one. <laughs> So, yeah, so, and then the girls, the little girls, they would go to the Gat. And it's mentioned in the Shastras that if a girl wants a good husband, she should worship Lord Shiva. Because Lord Shiva, if, she, if, you, if a girl worships Lord Shiva nicely, she'll get a good husband. Lord Shiva can grant women nice husbands. That's his power. So it's mentioned, and girls would worship Lord Shiva regularly. So the little girls, they would come, because in India, the culture was, and girls would get married before puberty. Prabhupada said, my mother, she was married when she was 10. Uh, my father was about, I don't know, a little, not much older. But then one time, he was telling me one time when... Uh, one person, he was a young boy, he was eight years old, and they woke him up, they said, come on, get up, get up, it's time to get married. He was, he was eight years old. <laughs> so his mother, she, he said his sister was married at 11. And the reason why is that when a girl returns to a certain age, then that's called puberty, and then she starts to, you know, that desire starts to become strong. So when that desire starts to run, they marry girls at that, that, at that age. So they focus on one man for the rest of their life. And usually that's how it works. That's the Vedic culture. And Prabhupada, Prabhupada said it's still, it's still like that today. And marriages were arranged like that. And that was for protection of the women, like that. So nowadays, ladies are like 35 and they still can't find a husband. You know? <laughs> it's like, I've been looking for 20 years. <laughs> I can't find one. And nobody wants to get married anymore because they think, oh my God, everybody's getting divorced. It's going to happen to me too. <laughs> so, so we have a very dysfunctional society. The women are displaced. They don't really know where to go or how to find shelter or where they get direction in life. In Vedic culture, the parents were responsible for the girl and made sure that she grew up nicely and got a nice husband, and that was their responsibility. And it was always done at a young age. So these little girls, they were seven, eight, nine, ten years old, they would worship Lord Shiva, and they would put a little Shiva Linga on the banks of the Ghat, and make a throne, and then they would offer flowers and garlands to, to, to the Shiva Linga and pray to Lord Shiva. So, little, so Nimai, he would come along, and he would take the Shiva Linga off, the, th off the, the little throne they made, and he would sit on it and say, worship me. <laughs> if you worship me, I will guarantee you get a very qualified 
be a handsome husband and you'll have so many sons who will be very, very intelligent. You'll have a nice husband who's handsome and so many nice children who are intelligent. And they would say, Nimai, what are you doing? This is Lord Shiva. You're offending Lord Shiva. And he would say, Lord Shiva? Lord Shiva is my devotee. Don't worry. <laughs> they couldn't figure it out, you know. <laughs> so then they would get puzzled. Then he would say to them, well, if you don't worship me, then I'll curse you that you'll be one of seven co-wives and you'll have an old, ugly husband. <laughs> and they would get scared. <laughs> So, and they, they would think, he's got some power. <laughs> so then he would play all kinds of mischief. And then what he would do sometimes to the girls, he would, there's these, this is fruit called, I forgot the name of the fruit, but the seeds in the fruit are very sticky. They're called okada, okada seeds, okada seeds. And they're real sticky. So he would take it and he put it in the hair of the girls. <laughs> and there they get all these sticky seeds in there. And they say, Nimai! <laughs> and then he would run away. <laughs> so he would do all kinds of mischief. So this was, you know, and then this is God. <laughs> So this is the God you worship who puts sticky seeds in girls' hair, <laughs> who, who spits water in Brahmin's face. You know? <laughs> so if somebody asks you, what's the nature of your God, you can describe. <laughs> so, you know, one time he saw his mother. She was going, uh, and he said, Mother, where are you going? She's going, I said, I, she said, I'm going to worship Goddess Shasti and uh, I, have, I have this offering for Shasti. And I'm offering worship for Shasti for your protection. And he said, what do you have? She, uh, he had some sandesh. He said, well, I'm hungry. Give me this sandesh. She said, no, no, this is for the goddess. And then he would take it anyway. <laughs> he would grab it from her and eat it. And she would say, oh, you're going to offend Goddess Shasti? And he would say, Goddess Shasti, she's also my devotee. No. <laughs> so one time he came, and it was in the evening time. He, sa he said to his mother, I want the moon. The moon, you know, moon. I want the moon. Give me the moon. And she said, that's impossible. Give me the moon. I want the moon. <laughs> and uh, she took a mirror and she held it and she reflected the image of the moon in the mirror and she said, here. And he said, oh, mother, you're very intelligent. Thank you. <laughs> now he would do all kinds of things. So one time he... he uh, yeah, she was also going to worship one demigod, and so he said to her, his mother, I'm hungry. She said, okay, I have to go worship, it might, it might have been Shasti again, another demigod. I'll be back, and after I come back, I'll make something. He said, I want something now. <laughs> she said, I will just be patient, I'll be back. No! So he ran into the house, took a stick, and he broke all the pots, threw the ghee on the floor, smashed the windows with the stick, broke the broke the the pot with the the, the, the uh, what is it, ada in it, rice. He threw every he destroyed everything in the whole house, <laughs> and then he went to sleep. <laughs> and, his, and then after some time, he woke up and he said, "Mother, I'm hungry." She said. Yeah, but there's nothing. You 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 you, you destroyed everything. <laughs> he said, "Okay, I'll be right back." <laughs> so he went out and came back after a few minutes, and he said, "Here, take this and buy it." He came back with two tolas of gold, <laughs> tolas about an ounce or so, and she gave it to his mother. And his mother said, "She was thinking, where does he get this gold from?" <laughs> 
And so he would just do that. He would just he would break everything and then give her some gold to buy new stuff. <laughs> this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he was very mischievous like that. Like, so these are some of the childhood pastimes of the Lord. If you compare him with Krishna, it seems like Lord Chaitanya was even more mischievous than Krishna. <laughs> So that mischievous nature is the sweet nature in the Lord because when the Lord performs it, everybody enjoys. <laughs> and everybody enjoys. Yeah, you know, devotees have mischievous natures too. One time, one devotee, I won't tell you whose name is, he was on a plane and there were, you know, he's a very, you know, sweet devotee. And um, two people were in front of him. There were two Jewish people in front of him. So yeah, sometimes the Jewish, the, the, the Orthodox Jew, they have this long hair. It's like a braid. It comes down. And they have these strings coming down from their thing. So they were talking really loud, and he was getting disturbed, and it was going on. So uh, he... Uh, he took their braids and tied it to the seat. <laughs> and then when it was time to leave the plane, he got up and left fairly fast. <laughs> and then when they got up, I guess he didn't stick around to see what happened. But <laughs> no, devotees are like that. We're a little mischievous also. Sometimes we do things. So this is, so Prabhupada said, this is where you get your mischief. We get all of our characteristics from Krishna. Everything, all of our qualities, our bad qualities are not in Krishna. Except one. He, Krishna is a thief. <laughs> so if we like to steal, it's also part of Krishna's qualities. <laughs> but Krishna does his, he steals your heart. And that's the, that's the thing he steals. And if he steals your heart, then you're in trouble. You can't get it back because he hi he hides it. And then you'll try to find your heart again, and you can't find it. And if he steals your heart, and you're in trouble. Then you don't know what to do. I la my heart has been stolen by God. What am I going to do? So then you have to catch that thief and then you put him into the jailhouse of your heart and you lock him there and keep him there and make sure he doesn't get out again so he can do more stealing. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a beautiful bhajan. It's called Krishna, Who's the Thief. And there's a song. It's, it's a long song describing how Krishna steals. <laughs> He's a first class thief. But everything belongs to him anyway. So whatever he steals, it's his. <laughs> and we steal it. We get in trouble. <laughs> but Krishna is, he, there's nothing he can steal because everything belongs to him. Mm -hmm. When uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came back from Gaya after meeting his spiritual master, he changed and he started to show symptoms of ecstasy and his mother was really wondering what, what happened to him. Before he was a very sober, at least in front of his mother, uh, person. But now he was crying in ecstasy and so many things. He was exhibiting the love of God. This was even at an early age after he met his spiritual master. So his mother was thinking, there's something wrong with him. He maybe he's got some disease like the distorted winds. They call it epilepsy. You heard of epilepsy. So his mother was thinking, I have to take him to the doctor. So she took him to the doctor and said, yeah. Yeah, he has a very severe wind disorder. So you have to bathe him in herbal oils. And uh, 
So she tried that and it didn't work. <laughs> then he, she went to another Kavi Raj and he said, yeah, you take some Shiva ghee and you rub it on his head and this will make him better. So she tried that. But Lord Chaitanya was always in ecstasy and he was always exhibiting these things and he couldn't help it because he was, in, he was feeling so much love for Krishna. So finally she said to uh, Gadadhar, Gadadhar, you're the only one that can control my son. Because every time when Lord Chaitanya was with Gadadhar, he would be really well behaved, peaceful, and a sweet guy. <laughs> Gadadhar would do it all the time. So Lord Ch and they were almost the same age. Lord Chaitanya was about two months older than Gadadhar. They were born in the same year. So, Lord uh, Sachimanta said, Gadadhar, you know, you're the only one who can tr control my son, so stay with him. And so he did. And then uh, Lord Chaitanya said to Gadadhar, you know, they say that I, I have this disease. What do you think? Gadadhar said, yes, it's a very, very serious disease. And it has completely taken over your whole body. And that disease is love for Krishna. <laughs> and uh, so when Lord Chaitanya said, thank you. <laughs> if you would have said I had all these other things, then I would have drowned myself in the Ganga. <laughs> so Gadadhar was so sweet. Gadadhar is an incarnation of Srimati Radharani, but in a different mood. Radharani's mood is very... What's, I don't know if you know the, the Slovenian word for feisty. Do you know that word, feisty? Feisty. No? Nobody knows. Feisty? That's Radharani's mood is feisty. I mean, she's... She's very independent and very uh, strong-natured, but sweet inside. <laughs> but when she came as Gadadhar, she was the opposite, very sweet, gentle, obedient, did everything that Lord Chaitanya asked her. You found the word? F-I-E-S-T-Y, feisty. What does it say? Okay, you you can't speak Slovenian, right? No. <laughs> so what what is it? Does it give a definition? What what's huh? Strong will. Yeah, very yeah. Strong will. Very good. That's a good one. Very strong will. Exact. That's a perfect definition. Strong will. But outwardly strong. <laughs> Like that. So that's Radharani. But when she came as Gadhadhar, she's very soft, very sweet, very gentle. When Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, mm -hmm. and he went to Jagannath Puri, and Gadhadhar immediately couldn't take the separation, so he followed and came to Jagannath Puri also. So when Lord Chaitanya was there, he gave uh, Gadhadhar a deity. Gopinath, his name is Gopinath. We also know them as uh, um, Tota Gopinath. Yeah, Tota means garden. So Tota Gopinath, and he worshipped that deity. And then Gadadhar took Shetra Sanyas. If you know what Shetra Sanyas is, it's a kind of renunciation where you stay in one holy place and you don't travel, and you worship the deity there, just like, it seems like the COVID, COVID uh, disease has caused us all to take Shetra Sinas. No. So I have reluctantly taken Shetra Sinas. 
you don't go any place. <laughs> but the, the vow is a lifetime thing, and you worship the deity there. So, then Lord Chaitanya, he decided to go traveling. And he wanted to go to Vrindavan. And so, but Gadadhar heard, heard that Lord Chaitanya was going to leave, so he said, well, if you're going, I want to go with you. I can't be without you. But Lord Chaitanya said, but you, you made a vow. You're taking Shetra Sunyas. You worship Gopinath. You can't, you can't leave. You can't give up your vow. I'm going with you. <laughs> if I let you go, then I'll be the cause of your breaking your vow. And so Lord Chaitanya was strong and Gopi and Gadadhar was also very demanding, I want to go. So Lord Chaitanya decided to go. So he walked and he came into the one boat and he told the boatman, all right, take me across. So Gadadhar followed him all the way to the boat. And then um, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was also there. And Gadadhar was watching and Lord Chaitanya looked at Gadadhar and immediately told the boatman, leave. And he left immediately and Gadadhar just fainted. And with the pain of separation already. And then after some time, uh, he came back to consciousness and Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya says, just be patient, just be patient. Be patient, Gadadhar. So Lord Chaitanya, he went to Ramakali, and then when he was at Ramakali, he met uh, Sanatan and Rupa Goswami, and that's where he gave them instructions to give up their service to the Islamic government and come and join him, come to Vrindavan, actually. So the Lord was on his way to Vrindavan, but then, when he was there, Sanatana Goswami told Lord Chaitanya, you know, it's not a good time to travel. I don't think you should go to Vrindavan. It's not. So Lord Chaitanya listened, but he decided to go anyway. So when he left Ramakali, he started to travel. And then something came on me and said, I think Sanatana is right. Krishna doesn't want me to go. So he turned around. And he went all the way back to Jagannath Puri. And when he came back so soon, Gadadhar was so happy to see Lord Chaitanya come back so soon. And then Lord Chaitanya, they asked him, all the other devotees asked him, wow, you were going to Vindavan, but why did you come back? And Lord Chaitanya said something very interesting, which is very important for us to understand. He said, well, Krishna didn't allow me to go to Vrindavan because I hurt the heart of Gadadhar. And therefore, because I did that, I wasn't allowed to go to Vrindavan. In other words, he caused Gadadhar some pain by leaving. But the Lord was teaching that one should always be very sensitive and to the feelings of others and not cause anyone any distress. Sometimes we can't help it, but it happens. But the Lord wanted to teach that principle. So he said, I hurt the heart of Gandhatar, so Krishna wouldn't let me go. Interesting. And then, of course, the Lord stayed there. Later on, of course, he traveled six years out of good, uh, out of, out of, uh, Jagannath Puri, and he traveled all the way down the eastern side of India to Cape Comorum, came up the western side, and when he got to Bombay area, which wasn't called Bombay at the time, it was called Vyapiana Puri or something. Vyapiana Puri was the name of Bombay. That's the ancient name. And then he crossed in that area, and then he crossed over and went back to the eastern side and then arrived in Jagannath Puri. So that took him six years. And he visited so many temples, Shiva temples, Vishnu temples, Krishna temples, so many temples he visited. It's all mentioned where he went and how he spread the Sankirtan movement. 
When someone asks Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, we, heard, we know that Lord Chaitanya spread Krishna consciousness throughout the entire Indian subcontinent. And he's God, and he could have made the whole world Krishna conscious. Well, why didn't he do it? Why did he just do India? <laughs> and the devotee said that to Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, well, he left it for me to do. He left it for me to do. That was Prabhupada's response. So the, the Lord is like that. He likes to, he can do anything. Prabhupada said, Krishna can take day and make it night. He can make night into day. Is there anything he can't do? No. There was, there was this one group called the Mensa Society in London. Very intellectuals. Shamsundra arranged a meeting with Prabhupada in this group. So they came, and they were very intelligent. They would also ask all kinds of philosophical questions. So Prabhupada was speaking of different things. So one of the men said, uh, can Krishna, can he produce, or can he create a rock he can't lift? Can he create a rock he can't lift? So if you say yes, that means he, you, you know, you you minimize his lifting power, and if you say no, that means you minimize his creative power. <laughs> Trick question: If you answer yes or no, shows a fault in Krishna. So what do you think, Prabhupada said? <laughs> Can't cheat Prabhupada. He's, <laughs> you try to trick the pure devotee, you 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 find yourself embarrassed. <laughs> So Prabhupada said, yes, he can create a rock he can't lift, and then he'll lift it. <laughs> so don't try to fool the pure devotee. <laughs> Sometimes devotees would try to fool Prabhupada, you know, thinking they could do something that Prabhupada didn't know. There was one, Prabhupada, when Prabhupada was in Vrindavan one time, he was staying in his place, and then he, he would go to the temple, and he had a pair of these white shoes. So when he would go to the temple, he would, you know, he'd, he'd put his white shoes on and go to the temple, and then when he'd come back, he'd take the white shoes and leave them by the door, and he'd go into his quarters where he was staying, just very close by. So he would do that regularly, and always leave the shoes at the door. So one devotee was thinking, hmm, I'm going to get those shoes. <laughs> I want to get Prabhupada's shoes. So he made a plan. He was watching Prabhupada. So he went into the, into the town and he bought the exact same shoes. Same color, same size, same shoe. So he's thinking when Prabhupada comes back to his room, he'll leave his shoes outside and then I'll switch the shoes and I'll have Prabhupada's shoes. <laughs> so he was all ready. He was watching See what Prabhupada, Prabhupada came back, and this time instead of leaving his shoes at the door, he t he walked inside the room with the shoes on. <laughs> he never did that before. It was just this time that the devotee was ready to make the switch. <laughs> and so the the devotee was thinking, he never does that. <laughs> what happened? So the next day, Prabhupada was giving class, and he said, uh, "Don't try to play tricks on your spiritual master." <laughs> And then he went to the devotee and he gave him the shoes. He said, here. <laughs> he actually gave it to him. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, Prabhupada knew everything. Sometimes Prabhupada would be chanting japa in his room, and devotees would want to, you know, see into the Prabhupada's room to see what he would be doing, you know. He's all by himself. So it's many of those doors, they had these keyholes, you know, when you put the key in. And you could look through and you could see something. So one time, the body was looking through the keyhole and he saw an eye on the other side. <laughs> looking back, <laughs> you're watching me, but I'm watching you. <laughs> yeah, Prabhupada knew everything. <laughs> one time when Prabhupada was in Africa, <laughs> 
I think it was in Kenya, Nairobi. So the, the devotees would wash Prabhupada's clothes and they would hang it up on the line to dry. <laughs> so one time when they, after they washed it and they went out to get the clothes, all the clothes were gone. <laughs> Somebody had stolen all of Prabhupada's clothes, <laughs> his dhoti, and his, his korta, everything. So the next day when Prabhupada came in to give class, there were some of the local African people, and they were wearing Prabhupada's clothes. They came into class with wearing his clothes. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, oh, there's my clothes. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah, that's, if you go, to, and you can talk about Africa. He, he knows what it's like. <laughs> he has many African stories. And <laughs> so, yeah, so. That's another another pastime. <laughs> so these are some of the uh, you know, more light-hearted. And Krishna consciousness is a lot of fun. It's a serious business, but it's a lot of fun also. <laughs> so uh, devotees like to, you know, Prabhupada said, we have two activities in Krishna consciousness, swimming and laughing. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya, somebody asked me this today when I was giving a conference. They said, we heard Lord Chaitanya used to joke all the time. Can you tell us some of the jokes? I said, no. <laughs> because nobody knew what he said. And he was always joking, but he would never joke in public or with ladies. He would always joke with his most intimate associates when they were together. And that's when he would just make everybody laugh all the time. It's even in that song. Nava Gauravaram Nava Pushpasaram Nava Hemarutam Nava Sesha Pranamami Sachi Sutta Gauravaram Pranamami Sachi Sutta Godavaram. Beautiful song. And then in that, one of the verses is said, he's always causing much laughter with new and new and more different jokes. <laughs> yeah. That was um, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya's glorification of Lord Chaitanya, describing how he would always make jokes with his intimate associates, but not in public. Prabhupada said one time he joked in public. He said to his mother, his mother was looking for something she couldn't find, and he said, I think your, your daughter-in-law took it. <laughs> Referring to his wife, Vishnu Priya. <laughs> he probably said that's the only time he, was, he joked in public. But there's another time when he came back to, from East Bengal, he spent some time there, and people in East Bengal had a different accent so their accents were different. And Lord Chaitanya, we used to make fun of the accents when he'd come back. He would just try to speak like they, and they were speaking. So he was always creating humor. Lord Chaitanya was very personal. He still is. Very personal, very friendly. He loves to serve his devotees. Loves to perform kirtan. Loves to take prasadam. You can't have a better God than Lord Chaitanya. He's the best. <laughs> Even Krishna can't come up to that standard. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the supreme personification of the Godhead in, in all of his most amazing qualities. Especially, he liked to serve his devotees. He went out of the way to serve his devotees. So many pastimes. The Mahaprakash Leela describes how he personally served his devotees so many ways. And how he saved his devotees who were in trouble many times by taking, uh, becoming in disguise as another person just to save them. They didn't even recognize who he was. So this is Lord Chaitanya. He's very, very merciful. Prabhupada said, you'll never understand the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's not possible. 
even if you have even if you're the greatest of all thinkers and you're you have great intelligence abilities whatever you have you'll never understand lord chaitanya it's, it's so merciful so kind so available and so much inspiring his devotees to chant the holy names dance take prashadam like that this is lord chaitanya Are you going to get any bigger, or are you going to stay like that your whole life? You're so small. You're, we can put you in my pocket, and, no, and I'll still have more room in the pocket. <laughs> are you planning on getting any bigger? <laughs> yes, no. No? Okay, that's good. Then your mother doesn't have to buy new clothes. She can keep the same ones. <laughs> That's a problem with kids. The mothers have to keep changing, buying more clothes because they keep growing. But he's decided not to get bigger, so you can save a lot of money. <laughs> he makes holes. <laughs> he's, he's sweet, sweet guy. No, you're not sweet, okay. He's got a nice name. What's your name again? Juggy? It's Juggy, right? I got four names. Four names. Matulich. What's Matulich? Hmm? Oh, second name. Oh. Matulich and... Uh, Jagannath Matalich. Four names. Well, you, can, you want a new name? No. No? Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll stop at four. <laughs> but if you decide you change your mind, let me know. I'll give you a new one. <laughs> okay. No, he doesn't have a trouble making, and making decisions, does he? he He's very quick in making decisions, right? <laughs> That's good, but don't make the wrong ones. <laughs> okay, so we're right at the hour. Lord Chaitanya will disappear in a few minutes. <laughs> and here comes his disappearing personality. He just appeared to dis make him disappear. We don't like such people who, who come and make Lord Chaitanya disappear. Jai Sri Panchatattva Ki Lord Nityananda Ki Jai Okay, so any Questions, comments, yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much. Uh, since you were speaking about very uh, uh, naughty, uh, humorous mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, now there's one uh, pastime that's uh, even more humorous and naughty, but I'm not, I'm not sure now, was it Nityananda Prabhu or was it Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? It was the pastime where... Um, well, maybe you can enlighten it, but uh, it goes like, in the end he says, as the urine and rice don't mix together, so does the Mayavad philosophy and Bhakti don't mix together. You know that first time? <laughs> Say that again. As the uh, urine and rice don't mix together, oh. so does not the Mayavad philosophy. Oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, I'll tell you, I'll tell the past time. Okay. It was Marari Gupta. Marari Gupta was a physician. He was older than Lord Chaitanya. And Marari Gupta would be walking along the street with his students and he would be speaking. And Lord Chaitanya would follow Marari Gupta behind him. Marari Gupta would say something to his students and Lord Chaitanya would say, <laughs> He would just make fun of him, whatever he was saying. Marari Gupta would say, 
And this is the way it is. And Lord Chaitanya said, and this is the way it is. <laughs> so he would make fun of him. And then, and then he would walk with a limp. You know, Marari was, he had a limp when he walked. And so Lord Chaitanya would imitate that. <laughs> so Marari said, you know, Nimai, you're such a naughty person. Why don't you just go home and, you know, do something to help your parents? And little Nimai said, Morari, I'm going to teach you a lesson. And then he ran away. <laughs> so that night, Morari was taking his evening meal, and he was eating, and Lord Chaitanya, who's a little baby, he was about five years old at the time. Not baby, but five. So Morari was eating rice, and Lord Chaitanya came up, and he passed urine right in the rice. <laughs> You know, a little bit of ghee. <laughs> right on the rice. And then Marari just, you know, wow, what are you doing? And, uh, and then uh, Lord Chaitanya said, well, just like when you mix karma and gyan with bhakti, so I'm just teaching you a lesson. <laughs> the urine and rice don't mix. Karma and gyan with bhakti don't mix. Because <laughs> that's what he would teach to his students, how karma, gyan, and bhakti were all, all on the same level. Like that. Yeah, so that was the one. Yeah. Uh, don't try to imitate that pastime. <laughs> we just... Disappreciate it from a distance. <laughs> yeah, that's in, that's in the Chaitanya Bhagavad by Vrindavan Das Thakur. Okay, so thank you very much. And I have one question. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Dani, Dani low, Dani high. <laughs> Dani Krishna. in between high and low. <laughs> uh, Thank you for such a nice lecture about these pastimes. I'm wondering uh, if Lord Chaitanya have a uh, mood of Shmatradani from childhood on, or, and if so, does also Shmatradani have a mischievous nature? Does, does Shmatradani have what? She also mischief, mischiefs. No, she's nice. <laughs> she's not like you, no. <laughs> Radharani is not mischievous. <laughs> she's very sweet, gentle, always respectful to elders. It's one of her 25 main qualities, respectful to others. She's an expert dancer, expert singer. Uh, so many good qualities. It doesn't talk about, no, she wasn't. Girls are not supposed to be mischievous, <laughs> but nowadays it doesn't matter. <laughs> but Lord Chaitanya didn't exhibit his his bhava of Radharani until later on, towards the end of his leela. The first part he was Nimai, the scholar. The second part was spreading the Harinam and Sankirtan all over India, that Madhya Leela. And the last part was intimacy with his, with some of his more intimate dev devotees and going into his deeper moods of internal uh, consciousness in Radharani's mood. That was towards the end, the last, the last six years of his life. But it was always there, but it, it came out later on in his life. But when he was, when he met uh, Ramananda Roy at Kovor, he exhibited his uh, form. He, t he exhibited his form as Radha and Krishna, too. Yeah, there's, it's the, up there, it's in that particular pastime. To Ram and to Ramananda Roy, and that was in during the Madhya Leela. <laughs> Radha Sham Sundar. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice pastime. <laughs>
Okay, so Gorlila Kijai, and get ready for Sunday. Sila Prabhupada Ki Jagannath, whatever your last name is, Ki Jai. <laughs>